Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again. Nice to see you. We've got Mega Tank here. So this is my large DIY tank. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot. It's a big old tank for big old fish. And that's exactly what you would expect to see in here. So in the last video, I talked about getting some discus going, but I also got some other new fish. And ultimately I want to get them in here, but they're just a little bit on the small side to go in here. So I wanted to talk about some of the things I do to get my fish to grow better. So in this tank, I've got some of the baby fish that I got in the last fish order, specifically three peacock bass, which are down here and are becoming more and more interactive. They're not hiding, they're not shy. They don't run away when I come up to the tank like this so I can move around. They're quite into it, which is really good for getting fish to feed because if they're shy and hiding all the time, that's your first problem. So I'm really happy that they're not like that. And the other fish that I've got is the Emperor Snakehead, which again is a tiny version of what they will become. Um, I did have an Emperor Snakehead that was a bit of a rescue beforehand and it was a good two and a half feet long. So as you can see that this is maybe, I don't know, three inches long, <laughs> if that, it's got a long way to go. The peacock bass here, specifically they're Kilberry bass, which are one of the smaller ones. So some of the peacock bass you can get will get up to three feet long and things like this. These ones kind of top out around 12 to 18 inches. I think 18 inches is kind of the maximum you can expect, but in most home aquariums, 10 to 12 is what you get. I'm hoping because my tank is so big, I will get towards the 18 inch. But again, you can see here, they're like an inch and a half, two inches at most. So they've got some growing to do before they get here. The peacock bass is a fish that I've wanted for as long as I've had the mega tank. In fact, it was one of the fish that inspired me buying mega tank. I saw in a fish shop in Fishman Aquatics, which was one of the, the shops that I used to visit quite a lot, they had a Timensis bass, which is one of the big ones that get to like your three feet long. But it was just an awesome sight to see it. Um, so colourful, so energetic, so vibrant, so aggressive. These are mildly aggressive as far as peacock bass go, but the way they take food and things like that and the way they move has just been something that's fascinated, fascinated me for ages. I've, I've had one which didn't do very well. Again, it was a rescue and lost that. But I wanted to get some peacock bass in there because that is, Mega Tank is the tank that can have that kind of fish in there. So we finally got them. We've got three of them. They are from the kind of Brazil um, region of the Amazon, from slower moving tributaries. Um, so but that's one of the reasons that I like these ones is they don't get too massive, so I can have three of them in there. Um, but like the snakehead that's tiny, I've got to get these guys growing on. And I wanted to talk about one of the things that you can apply to most fishes, about how to get them to grow well in your aquarium and whether or not it's a good idea as well. So as far as I'm concerned, there's kind of two main factors to how you grow your fish. The food that you feed and the environment you keep them in. So in terms of food, I want to get something that's something that they can easily digest, that's really nutritious, that's high in protein. When you're growing protein is the kind of main thing that you're looking for here, but also something that they can digest easily and get it through their system and extract all the nutrients out of it. If I was to get um, any fish onto any food, it would be this stuff here that I have. It's my um, soft artemia. I've just poured all over the floor. Soft Artemia pellets. Um, it's kind of my number one go-to. I, I do sell this on my website, so take that with a pinch of salt, but I think it is a fantastic food and I want to get all my fish onto it, but it's not always the best food for all kinds of fish. So these fish are really small. They're not pellet trained, if that's a thing. So they might not take that. So what I've got to look at is they will grow faster the more food you can get into them. So what as something that they're going to take readily. So I'm using things like live foods. If I can get any live worms into them, so black worms, that kind of thing. I have a little culture of black worms. If I can feed them frozen foods like uh, brain shrimp, um, daphnia, any, any of those kind of things, if I can get them into them, they're usually a little bit more easily palatable to the fish. The live food is great because it kind of triggers that instinctual thing in them to feed on it. If they see a worm wiggling around, they'll go for it and attack. Um, frozen foods that kind of step down from that where it is, it is, it is once live, so it kind of retains that form, um, but it's a lot easier to get at. When they're really young, when we're talking like fry stage, obviously the best thing in the world is baby brine shrimp or green water. That's what you want first stage. But when we're talking about this size where they're still 
no longer really fry, but they're just very, very, very young juvenile fish. We want to move them onto something else. Um, like I say, I want to get them onto pellets for convenience. I'm a lazy, lazy fish keeper. I want to get something that doesn't take a lot of faff to feed. But to get them to that stage, I am going to go through the live foods, through the frozen foods, and see what I can get them onto pellet-wise. When I talk about pellet training fish, I generally will get them something that they will eat readily, whether that is, let's say, frozen brine shrimp, for instance. I'll feed some frozen brine shrimp and at the same time, throw in some pellets that I want them to go onto, and they will associate that with being food because it's next to the thing they normally eat. They might accidentally eat a pellet and go, oh, it's not too bad. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. I'm trying to power feed them at this stage to get them to a, a decent enough size. I want to move them from this tank. I've got another four or five foot tank over there. That will be the next stage before they go into the mega tank. And once they're into mega tank, they should be fully trained and eat all the things that I want them to eat. But if I am going to power feed them, there are some things I need to be aware of. Power feeding suggests feeding a lot. And that's essentially what it is. It's feeding a lot and it's feeding often. Um, what that means is I'm creating a higher bio load in the tank which isn't necessarily the best water conditions and that's the other thing you really need to be aware of when you're feeding fish heavily um, or trying to get them to grow at the best rate you can get them to grow at they need pristine water conditions these are things that you should be applying to all fish but especially if you're going to go to the extreme and feed heavily you need to go to the extreme and making sure that water is clean and that's doing large and frequent water changes it's making sure that if you are throwing food in there and even if they're eating it all and pooping it out you're getting everything out again and cleaning that water as much as possible ideally we would have the water as warm as the fish would be comfortable with because the raising of the temperature will raise the metabolism of the fish and help them process that food easier but again you've really got to keep an eye on the parameters and get it clean because just Making them process all that food adds to the bio load that might not be there if you were feeding them at a normal level. So you've just got to keep an eye on that. And again, with warmer water, if you're doing the warmer water, that can sometimes, along with the higher feeding, um, reduce the amounts of oxygen in the water. So you've got to make sure you're running air stones and things like that to make sure the water is oxygenated, it is healthy. Because again, no matter how good the food is that you're throwing in there, if the environment that they live in isn't good enough, it's going to negatively impact the fish. If you can't get them to feed, it's all very well saying, just throw more food in. If they're not going to eat any food, then we have to look at what techniques you can use to entice them into eating more of So I mentioned earlier that live foods are the best thing for that, and that is true. If I can feed some black worms in here, they will move around for a good couple of hours, quite happily, looking like something the fish want to eat. Um, it's no good having young fish that have never seen a pellet, just chucking in a load of pellets and watching them aimlessly circle around it, wondering what it is. It's never going to work like that. Um, so you can buy these things on eBay, you can go to your local fish store, they'll often have little pouches of live foods, whether it's Daphnia, whether it's black worms, whatever it is. Feed it forever. It doesn't have to be something you just use to get them onto a feeding regime. They are really good foods, they're really nutritious. Once you've got them onto that kind of regime, then you can move on to other things like your frozen foods, which are a little bit easier to manage. Given that, you can just keep them in the freezer and they'll last almost indefinitely. <laughs> um, and as you can see, these guys are diving straight in, going for it. Um, and this is the type of food that, really good for conditioning, really good for growth. Um, they don't really tire of it. They will stuff their bellies with it. Um, and it's really nutritious. It's just that you have to do a bit of defrosting and things like that. And other than that, it's no real hardship. The next thing after this, so what I've been doing with these fish is I have these micro pellets. Again, I sell these on my website. So take all this with a pinch of salt. I'm sure alternatives are available if you don't trust me. But you know, if you want to, you can buy these things off my website have these micro pellets, which are semi-sinking. So they float for a little while and slowly come down. Um, I'm feeding them at the same time that I'm feeding these frozen brine shrimp in the hope that they will pick up some of them. And they do, they will, um, it works really well. So once they've got onto these pellets, I will move them onto the soft artemia pellets, which I think are just the best food ever. And that's what I want to be their staple, but I'll still continue to feed the live foods and the frozen foods and all these things. 
it's, it works really well. And even though I'm talking about this in the context of growing mini monsters, the same applies in this tank. So this is my discus tank. And as you can see, what I've got here is some zebra daniels acting as ditherfish who are coming along going, oh yes, this is food. I do like this, which is getting all the other fish. I'm not going to do it because I'm on camera now, but it's getting all the other fish to go, oh, hang on. So this is all food, is it? And they go for it. One goes for it, then another one comes in, then another one comes in. And before you know it, you've got a little bit of a feeding frenzy on. Now, to be fair, I have just fed these not that long ago, so that might be why they're not all going mad. And I've got a camera in their face, but you can see that one of them at least is going for it. And that's another good technique, is to have a dither fish, both in making them feel comfortable, as well as pointing out what food is. So they're not the most natural of tank mates, Zebra Daniels and um, Discus, but it's doing the trick. And I'm using exactly the same techniques here. So ultimately the goal is to get them onto some kind of pellet, but I'm using live food in live blackworms and frozen food in the frozen brain ship, frozen Daphnia, um, to augment that diet or supplement that diet before I get them to the step of using the live, um, of using the pellets rather. And this will pile the weight on in no time at all. And that's something we might want to be conscious about, piling the weight on as fast as possible. It's not necessarily the best thing for the fish. It's the best thing for me because I want to get these fish into the big tank and see them in all their adult glory with their full on size and colors and all those good things. But if I'm damaging them by hurting their digestive system, hurting their livers, hurting their whatever it is by feeding them too much too quickly, I'm not being the best fish keeper I can be here. So I'm trying to optimize the feeding here. These fish here, the Kilberry, um, they will grow like kind of an inch a month. They are quite a fast growing species. So I can push them a little bit because genetically they're predisposed to eat a lot and grow up fast. Whereas the discus are a little bit slower growing, so I don't really want to be power feeding them too much. I just want to be maintaining whatever the optimum is for whatever species of fish. Maintaining that so as I get the best out of them rather than pushing them too far. Um, I always am a big fan of offering to small fish lots of feeds during the day and letting them dictate how fast they'll eat. I can always clean up more if need be. It's a lot better than not offering them enough food. Um, they might decide they're not hungry at a certain time and if I feed them then and don't feed them again later on then that's me making the mistake where they're not ready to eat at the right time so if I offer multiple chances for them to feed I can figure them out as much as they can figure me out knowing that I'm safe and I'm the guy that's coming to feed them a few this time last week me being this close to the tank these fish would not be this they'd be hiding behind the filter they're starting to associate me with the the big shape that brings food and that's all we want. Seeing the little fat bellies of these fish is exactly what we want to see. So watch this space. These tiny little monsters are going to be great big monsters in no time at all. Um, make sure you click that subscribe button so you follow along. You see these guys grow up. Hopefully we get all of these into Mega Tank and have a really cool Mega Tank. So if you want to see what happens over the years when we get these fish in here and see Mega Tank evolve into my dream fish tank, click that subscribe button that's down there. There's also every Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time. We do a live stream. Come and join me there and ask me any questions. Sometimes we do a bit of a show and tell around the fish room. There's lots of things going on. We've got a discus project going on at the moment where we're trying to grow and breed some discus. So there's lots of things going on in the fish room. Um, so if you like it, click that subscribe button. Something like 60-70% of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed. So it really helps me out. Um, click the buttons and see you in the next one. Bye.